So in recent years, um, in personal development and self-improvement circles, as well as in, you know, in psychological and mental health fields, this concept of neuroplasticity has become popular as it's gained increasing recognition. Um, um, neuroplasticity is, um, it's often referred to as the, the, the brain's ability to reorganize itself by forming new neural connections you know, throughout our lives, which which offers you know plenty of hope to those looking to improve their mental well-being in particular um the, the the brain is not fixed or unchangeable as as once believed but instead it, you know it's it's a, a a dynamic and adaptable organ uh, capable of growth and transformation and I, I wrote an article on this topic recently and received um, a bunch of questions so i thought i'd record a video briefly exploring um what neuroplasticity is its benefits and offering up a bunch of simple neuroplasticity exercises that are supported by you know good quality scientific research um and and that you know ultimately anybody can employ to enhance mental well-being um and, and, and neuroplasticity, which is often referred to in the literature as, as, as brain plasticity, refers to this the, the brain's ability to change and adapt as a result of experience. And, and this adaptability is, is critical for learning new skills, for recovering from brain injury and, and improving overall mental health. And neuroplasticity operates on several levels. So from the, the, the cellular changes that occur when we're learning a new task to large scale sort of cortical remapping, which, which happens after brain damage. Um, so the, this idea that the brain can um, rewire itself means that, that mental habits and emotional responses and thought patterns can be you know, altered through you know, on purpose, through, through intentional practice. So by engaging in certain exercises that, that therefore promote neuroplasticity, we can improve cognitive function, um, emotional regulation, and, and, and overall well-being. And the, the, I mean, the psychological and emotional benefits of, of harnessing neuroplasticity are, are, are far reaching, um, but, but, but actively engaging in neuroplasticity exercises, the likes of which I'm, I'm going to speak about shortly, you know, you can reduce symptoms of anxiety and depression. Um, I mean, studies suggest that the brain's plasticity can be can be leveraged to decrease negative thought patterns in particular, which are often central to, to certain problematic mental health conditions like anxiety and depression, and, and depression being something that I have a real personal and professional interest in. Um, um, but, but also, you know, we, we, we learn to enhance emotional regulation. So th through practice, certain individuals can develop healthier emotional responses to stressors, um, improving um, resilience and the ability to cope with challenges. Uh, but, but also, you know, boost, uh, boost cognitive functioning. Um, so neuroplasticity, of course, you know, can, can it enhance memory functioning, um, um, you know, our ability to focus and, and our attention, as well as problem solving abilities um, in, in the way in which it creates new neural pathways and, and strengthens existing ones. Um, it can also improve, you know, overall quality of life, um, uh, you know, in order that uh, to, to promote a sense of well-being and increasing life satisfaction. And, and some of the ways in which we can do that um, uh, include, you know, mindfulness meditation, uh, uh, you know, a powerful practice that's been scientifically proven to promote neuroplasticity. And research has shown that, you know, consistent um, being 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 consistent with with mindfulness practice can lead to structural changes in the brain and um, particularly in in the prefrontal cortex you know these uh, the, the, the the front part of our brain which is associated with with higher cognitive functions like decision making emotional regulation self-awareness it also increases the the thickness of the hippocampus uh, which plays a key role in memory and learning while reducing the size of the amygdala which is the, the brain's emotional center that's responsible for fear and stress responses and, and very often you know will benefit from from, from deactivation um, we benefit from its deactivation that is um, certainly we teach a range of methods of mindfulness meditation at my college uh, but you can track down a whole bunch of those online 
Um, gratitude journaling is another thing. Uh, the simple act of expressing gratitude has a profound effect on neuroplasticity. So, you know, the, the just the act of writing down things for which we are grateful encourages the brain to focus on positive experiences, thus rewiring the brain to recognize positivity more readily. Um, there was a, there was a, a 2017 study that I uh, that I talk about often, um, published in Frontiers of Psychology, um, showing gratitude practice linked to increased activity in the medial uh, prefrontal cortex. Uh, you know the the, the the part of the brain responsible for learning and and decision making. So you know a basic practice of, of just on a daily basis, um, you know writing down three things that you're grateful for, or, or reflecting on why you appreciate those aspects of your life and, and regular gratitude journaling shifts focus away from negative thoughts um, in a way that I'm, I'm certainly on my courses I refer to it as as um, a panning for gold within your your, your daily experience and uh, it promotes a positive mental outlook and improves emotional well-being over a period of time. Um, something else we can do is, is learn a new skill. Uh, learning something new, whether it's as complex as something like learning a language or a musical instrument um, or, or, or taking up a sport. Um, these things significantly enhance neuroplasticity. Uh, engaging in activities that challenge the brain can strengthen neural connections and can even generate new neurons through the process uh, called neurogenesis. The more complex the skill, the more beneficial it is for the brain's adaptability, you know, because it's getting a, a more challenging workout. So you might consider choosing a new skill or a hobby, something you are genu genuinely interested in, and dedicate some time each day or on a regular basis to practicing and, and developing this skill. Um, and and you know according to to to, to you know, good quality research, learning new skills increases gray, uh, gray matter density, which is linked to improved cognitive functioning. Um, um, and, and so you want to make sure you don't get uh, don't get caught in 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 the dopamine trap, which is um, uh, that that you know we get rewarded with with dopamine in our brain um, um, when we when we do things that we're comfortable with that we're familiar with, and very often if we're doing something new and we're not getting that kind of hit, uh, we get trapped and 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 we, and we sometimes find it more difficult to do so. So it, it's worth sort of pushing through that a little bit. Um, something else um, is is physical exercise. Physical exercise doesn't just benefit the body. It's also one of the most effective neuroplasticity um, um, exercises for the brain. Aerobic exercises, you know, like walking, running, cycling, increase the production of um, um, brain derived neurotrophic factor, which is something called BDNF in the literature, a brain derived neurotrophic factor. Um, and, and that's a protein that supports the growth of new neurons and synapses. And this growth has been linked to enhanced memory, learning, emotional regulation. So, you know, if you consider um, engaging in at least 30 minutes of moderate intensity physical exercise or activity um, for most days of the week, you know, like a, a walk, um, swimming, dancing, um, um, you know, studies have found that regular uh, aerobic exercise enhances neuroplasticity, can reduce symptoms of anxiety, depression and so on. Um, cognitive behavioral hypnotherapy is something that I teach as a fundamental approach on my college's hypnotherapy practitioner uh, diploma training courses. And cognitive behavioral hypnotherapy is, is an established psychological intervention often operating on the principles of neuroplasticity. And it helps, um, I mean, in part, I mean, it, it's, it's far, far more broad reaching than I can give credit to in a, in a small snapshot here. Um, but, but one of the things it does is helps individuals identify and reframe negative thought patterns, which over time rewires the brain to reduce automatic negative thoughts and emotional responses. Um, so, you know, engaging in exercises that, that challenge irrational beliefs and, and replace them with more balanced rational thoughts is, is, is one particular way to, to, to benefit from that. Otherwise, you know, seeking out a good evidence-based hypnotherapist trained in cognitive behavioral approaches um, um, will be awesome. Um, 
sleep optimization you know having adequate sleep is also essential for neuroplasticity because you know during sleep the brain consolidates memories clears out toxins uh, which facilitates learning and emotional regulation and uh, you know studies have shown that sleep deprivation impairs neuroplasticity and cognitive function um, similarly having good social connections and emotional support um, where, you know, so engaging in positive social interactions stimulates the release of oxytocin, uh, something I've recorded uh, lots of videos previously, uh, which is, uh, you know, a hormone that promotes feelings of trust and connection. And um, social support also encourages the development of new neural pathways associated with emotional resilience and stress management. Um, um, so, you know, you know, maintaining close relationships with family and friends as much as you are able or engaging in activities that involve social interaction, such as, you know, joining clubs or volunteering and, and, and developing, you know, social connections. These things act as a buffer against mental health challenges and can also foster a sense of belonging and, and overall well-being. Um, as you would expect from me um, um, and, and, and the work I do and, you know, my area of specialism, uh, self-hypnosis is a great tool that helps with sleep, with physical exercise, with learning new skills. And so it's useful in an adjunctive capacity with, with so, so much of the other things that I've discussed here in this clip. And you can go and learn self-hypnosis for free using the link that I've given wherever you are watching this clip or um, in my bio, there's a link uh, that you can follow. So, you know, the, the, the brain's ability to rewire itself through neuroplasticity um, offers tremendous potential for improving mental health and well-being. And by engaging in certain neuroplasticity exercises, some of the, you know, the really basic stuff that I've outlined in, 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 you know, in this snippet today, um, um, can, can, you know, can see individuals experiencing some really profound psychological and emotional benefits and, and and the beauty of neuroplasticity lies in its accessibility you know anyone regardless of age or background can harness its power to enhance mental well-being um, um which is something you know I, I i hope you will consider adopting and, and and taking on board okay that's it for today many thanks bye for now